Welcome to this midweek bonus video. Today we're going to go through an old photo catalog and re-edit some otherwise boring photos to give them new life like this. If you're anything like us, you haven't been able to shoot outside for a while, so now's a good time to look at some old work and A, see the progress you've made over time, and B, see if there might be some hidden gems in your catalog that just need a little something something. We'll be doing this with Luminar 4, who are our lovely sponsors for this video. You can run Luminar as a plugin with Photoshop and Lightroom, or just as a standalone program. We'll get into that later though, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so I found a catalog from this shoot. It was a really overcast day with drab gray skies, which is fine, but for some of these city shots, there really just isn't much to grab the viewer in. Let's see what we can do with this photo from our old apartment building. And that, that's the Continental. That's LA's first skyscraper. We'll right click and choose Edit In, Luminar 4. I want to keep my Lightroom edits, so I'll work with a copy. In Luminar, I'm going to head straight into the Creative tab and open up the AI Sky Replacement tool. Now, a few things to keep in mind when replacing the sky. One, you'll want to look where the sun is in your photo and try to match the sun's position with your sky replacement. For example, if I had hard light hitting the front of the building here, it just wouldn't make sense if the sun was behind the building. Hmm? But, are there two suns? Two, you'll also want to try to match the overall color tones with your replacement sky. If your original image was shot during golden hour and you replace it with a dramatic cloudy sky, it's not going to look right or make sense. Three. You can source your own library of sky images as well as using the ones that come built into Luminar, so you have a lot of flexibility there. So for this photo, since it was taken on an overcast day, let's see what it looks like with some more dramatic clouds. Mm, okay, that's pretty good. This is where it really starts to blow me away. If we zoom in, we can see that it's masked out all the fine lines of this sign and other thin lines from other buildings. The Relight Scene Slider is something I use all the time because it will make color and exposure adjustments to your scene based off the sky that you choose to make the composite look more believable. I basically think of it as the amount that the sky is influencing the color grade of the rest of the image. Cool, let's check out a few more skies. This one's nice, but it doesn't really match as well. I love this one. I think it matches really well and adds a lot of drama to the image. I kind of want to see what a sunset would look like though, so let's try Dramatic Sunset 5. Wow, okay. This might be my new favorite. I like how the golden light reinforces the focal point of the image, and I think we can get away with this sky. Let's just turn the relight scene up a little more. I think this is looking really good. If we want to take it to a more graphic design stage, we could even add elements to the sky in the AI augmented sky panel. What's cool about this is it'll automatically keep all the elements masked in front of any objects you add. So you can see with this flock of birds, we can have some of them hidden behind this building. I actually like the idea of adding something here. Let's try some clouds. I think I like the coverage of clouds for, but I want to lower the amount, which is essentially the opacity of the clouds to around halfway. And then increase the relight slider to help it match our shot better. Once we're happy with it, we can just click apply and it'll end up right back in Lightroom. Cool, let's take a look at the before and after. Okay, I want to take a look at another shot that needs a little more work. Here's a photo that didn't make our selects, but I think we can spice it up a bit. Once again, I have my base edit in Lightroom, and I'm going to choose Edit In Luminar 4. So we just saw that when we don't have such hard shadows or color cast on our image, we can actually get away with adding a more colorful sky, so let's try Sunset Clouds 1. I still don't understand how it's able to detect such fine lines like this cable from this crane and mask it out. It's pretty freaking impressive. Once again, I'm gonna turn the relight scene slider up. The 60s range looks pretty good. Pretty good. Now I'm gonna open up advanced settings and warm up the sky's temperature a little bit. I think 55 looks good. I'm also gonna bump up the exposure just a touch. Around 26 looks nice. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the essentials tab and add a little AI accent and sky enhancer. With AI Accent, it's gonna evaluate the content of the image and then make lighting, saturation, and clarity adjustments based off of that. You can see it's bringing out a little more detail from our buildings and trees. 
and the Sky Enhancer will add more richness to the sky. Okay, so I just have the edges of these buildings on both sides of my frame and they are a little distracting, so let's erase them. I'm gonna click on this icon to go to the canvas and then choose Erase. Now up here, I'm gonna choose Lasso and draw a mask around both buildings. And I can click Add to use a brush to add to the mask as well. Okay, now I'll click Erase. And boom, they're gone. Let's take a look at the before and after. That's much better. Okay, so this is actually a really fun way to edit. So here are a few more shots that I did with Luminar. All right, let's move on to editing a portrait. I found this shot in our catalog and I was never really that stoked on the edit. So I'm gonna just open the raw file in Luminar. We're in the Essentials tab and these adjustments will probably look familiar to you from other programs. First things first, I'm gonna adjust the white balance to warm things up a bit. Then we have Smart Contrast. This will adjust the contrast without really any exposure or color shifts. So if we wanted to keep things light and airy, we can slide it down. Or for a little bit more of a moodier look, we can increase it. I'm gonna turn it up to 30. Next, I'm just gonna add a few points to the tone curve and make some adjustments. I'm gonna slightly lift the black point, pull back the shadows, and then round out the top by bringing the white point down. Okay, let's check out AI Enhance. What's that? It's an enhancement program. It's gonna evaluate the content of the image and make lighting, color, and clarity adjustments just like in our last image. But the technology is skin and face aware, so you can crank it up all the way to 100, and it's not even gonna do anything crazy to our subject. Now onto AI structure. The boost slider will add texture to your image, but once again, it's skin and face aware, so it's not gonna affect our skin. So if we wanted to bring out more of the detail in the foliage behind our model, we could turn up boost to do so without having to use an adjustment brush or a gradient filter. Now the amount slider will work independently of boost, and this will enhance the differences in the contrast, and it'll increase the dynamic range of the photo. I'm just gonna add a little bit of structure to bring out those background details. On a similar note, I'm gonna jump down to Details Enhancer. Here we can increase details by size. Hey, that's what she said. So on a portrait, we don't wanna increase small details because that will add unwanted detail to the skin. Rather, we can add some medium details to add to the eyes, hair, and clothes, for instance. We can also increase overall sharpening and open the advanced settings to increase the sharpening masking, which limits sharpening to the most in-focus areas of an image, since we don't really need to sharpen a blurry background. Next, in Landscape Enhancer, we have Dehaze, which you may know of from Lightroom, and it works similarly here. I like to add just a touch to my edits. Golden Hour is kind of like a warming filter, and Foliage Enhancer will target the common colors found in Foliage and allow you to boost its saturation and then even shift the hue. Okay, I think it's looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty. Pretty, 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 pretty. Pretty good. Now let's take a look at the portrait tab. The AI skin enhancer tool will smooth out the skin in a natural way where it maintains fine details like the pores of the skin. It's kind of like frequency separation without all the work. And then we have shine removal, which works surprisingly well if you have brighter hits on your subject's face. We don't really have that in this shot, but in a photo like this, we can see that it really evens out those bright hits. All right, in the AI portrait enhancer section, we can increase the face light slider to automatically brighten the face. Usually we'd have to use an adjustment brush and manually paint the mask on, but Luminar automatically detects the face and adds the mask for us. Now we have a lot of enhancement tools down here. I love the dark circles removal because it just lifts those shadows gently without it looking overdone. I'll just do a few more adjustments to give the photo just a little more polish. 
Okay, one last feature that I want to show you is the Color Enhancer tool. Under Color Contrast, we can add some vibrance by increasing the contrast and the saturation of the image. Then we can adjust the hue. I like how it looks over the 220 range. Okay, we then also have a split color warmth. It's kind of like split toning, but instead of adjusting the hues of the shadows and highlights, we can independently adjust the hues of the warmer and cooler parts of our image. So if we want the warmer parts more warm, we can increase it or decrease it to cool it down. We can then do the same to the cooler parts of our image. I think it's looking really good. One other thing we can do is go to our layers and we now have an adjustable slider where we can lower the amount of all the edits we just made. So you could always edit a little heavier if you want and then dial it back at the end to your liking. I'm happy with this edit and I'm gonna save all these adjustments as a new look so I can apply these settings to other photos. Okay, one last thing that we wanna try. If you've been stuck at home for a while like us and are itching to take some new photos, here's something just about anybody can try. Luminar Sky Replacement is most commonly used on landscape photos, but Rachel and I wanted to put it to the test by taking a different type of photo. Usually the AI Sky Replacement works best when it can detect a horizon in the image, but we wanted to see if it could still work at a more unique angle. We placed our camera pointing straight up and then posed over the camera like so. Now we can load it into Luminar and we see that our original sky is pretty washed out. Nothing to write home about. So I think this is definitely beyond sky replacement's intended use, but let's just have some fun with it. It's done a pretty good job considering this angle, so let's just refine the mask by using a brush and erasing the parts of Rachel that it thinks needs a little sky. Okay, that's done. That's done. All right, now we just have to keep in mind that the perspective of the clouds in our replacement sky should match as closely as possible to the perspective we shot the photo at. So for instance, Dramatic Sky 3 definitely doesn't make sense with the given perspective. Ooh, I can't help but love this one. Okay, it looks great, but one thing's missing. Put a bird on it! All right, there you have it. I've had a lot of fun editing with Luminar 4, and one of the nice things about it is it's just a one-time payment and not a monthly subscription, so you pay for it once and you're done. You can also try it out for seven days for free, so just click the link in our description. Also, if you can safely get outside, take a photo, and edit it in Luminar, tag us and then use the hashtag MangoStreetQuarantine so we can take a look. And as always, we'll be posting our favorites on our Instagram stories. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And in the comment section below, let us know what video you want to see next from us. I'll see you next Monday. One of the nice things about it is it's just a one-time payment and not a monthly subscription like some other services. Oh, don't do that. I'm just kidding. My throat hurts from talking. All right, cut.